So someone's asked about what is the difference between the ideal world and the real world? Well, these are terms we use in multi-party computation to actually establish security. So what we kind of imagine is that there's this ideal world which computes the function for us without revealing any um, of the data. So imagine we've got some godlike figure who actually computes what we want for us. Now in MPC, which is the real world, what we try to do is come up with a protocol which emulates the ideal world. So someone's asked whether quantum key distribution, otherwise known as quantum cryptography, will replace classical cryptography. In my view, it never will. Quantum key distribution is a very, very niche market, a very niche area that doesn't really deploy to what the type of systems that we actually use in cryptography at the moment. Cryptography is a very wide subject. It allows us to authenticate data. It allows us to communicate between people who have never met before. It allows us to engage in complicated protocols like electronic auctions, electronic voting systems, um, attestation of devices, etc. None of these issues are, are, are dealt with by quantum key distribution, which just solves a very, very small part of the puzzle. So in some sense, quantum key distribution is only ever going to be a tiny, tiny part, if any part, of the cryptographic ecosystem. Someone has asked about was Enigma the only cipher used by the Germans? Actually, it wasn't. There was a much more important cipher used called Lorentz, which was to communicate between the German high command and the divisional commanders out in the field. So, for example, there might have been a single radio signal that went from Berlin to Paris to send instructions backwards and forwards from the French command to Berlin. And this was encrypted using Lorentz, which was a far more complicated encryption algorithm than the Enigma machine. The British cracked Lorentz, and in doing so, they actually brought in the modern digital age, because to do so, they had to build the world's first digital programmable computer called Colossus, which was a huge machine, which enabled people to break the Lorentz cipher. The success of Lorentz was such that the allies could work out that their Faint of pretending to invade the Pas de Calais region had been completely uh, swallowed by the Germans and therefore the Normandy landings could proceed with facing much less resistance than they would have otherwise have expected. And this was because we knew this was going to happen because Lorentz had been broken a few months before the Normandy landings.